It's early morning on the coast of Normandy, and we're taking one final look at Mont Saint Michel before leaving. If I'm awestruck, just imagine what pilgrims in the Middle Ages must have felt while standing on this same spot after making the long, dangerous trek to this part of France. The peaceful, idyllic scene you come across while driving through the farms and villages of Normandy show little traits of the violent battles that took place during the Hundred Years' War between France and England from the 14th to the 15th century, and more recently, during the Second World War between the Allies and Nazi Germany. On a nice day like this one, the beaches of Normandy would look like any other on the French Atlantic coast. Scenic, beautiful, calm. But on June 6, 1944, a different scene would unfold here. The color of the sea and the sand would be the color of blood. The blood of the men who lost their lives here. And that day would be remembered as D-Day. D-Day was the start of Operation Overlord, an ambitious and amphibious cross-channel invasion of Nazi-occupied Normandy. And this beach, codenamed Omaha, was one of many along the coast where the Allies landed under withering German fire. Brutal and at times one-sided encounter between American and German forces on the sands of Omaha was the same one recreated in the famous Hollywood film, Saving Private Ryan. At Omaha, there were between 2,000 to 4,000 casualties on the American side alone, and over a thousand Germans. Both the Allies and Hitler's commanders knew that if Normandy fell, the road to Paris would be open, and inevitably to Berlin. An Allied loss in Normandy could have changed the course of history. That's why the Allied command couldn't take any chances, and neutralizing German strongpoints guarding the beaches was a priority. This is the Pont du Hoc. It was an important tactical operation during the D-Day landings on June 6, 1944. In this part of the cliff, you had heavy German batteries that could decimate the landing forces, huge cannons that were positioned here. It was a task of the U.S. Rangers to neutralize the Germans in this position, which they did. The Battle of Pont du Hoc is less known than the one that took place in Omaha nearby, but it was just as heroic. Hundreds of U.S. Army Rangers were tasked with assaulting the cliff top position from the sea beneath. To soften the fortified defenses, the Allies bombarded Pont du Hoc repeatedly. The craters from their bombs and shells are still around for all to see. What happened here on June 6 is nothing short of miraculous. The U.S. Rangers had to physically scale the cliffs using nothing more than ladders. It goes without saying, many were killed in the process, but eventually they were victorious. The majority of those killed or wounded were Rangers trying to scale the cliffs, but Pont du Hoc was eventually captured, one of the many daring feats that took place on D-Day. I guess this inscription says it all. These are the boys of Pont du Hoc. These are the men who took the cliffs. These are the champions who helped free a continent. These are the heroes who helped end the war. Signed, Ronald Reagan, President of the United States. The American soldiers who fell on D-Day, along with those who were killed in action in France, were buried at the American Cemetery and Memorial overlooking the English Channel in Omaha Beach. There are 9,387 American military dead remembered here, though most of the bodies have been reburied in the United States since. 
while the names of 1,557 soldiers missing in action or whose bodies were never found are inscribed on the memorial wall here. The other allied nations have separate memorials in Normandy, but the American cemetery is the largest and most visited, and yes, most familiar, thanks again to that popular Spielberg film. Every grave here has a heroic story to tell, but some stories are more popular than others, especially those stories that have made into film, like the movie Saving Private Ryan, which is based on the story of two brothers who are buried here, right here, Robert and Preston Nyland. In real life, there were four Nyland brothers that fought in the war, and when it was found out that two were killed in action in Normandy, and one other missing in the Pacific, the fourth brother, the inspiration for Private Ryan, was ordered home. There's so much you can tell just by looking at these gravestones. Robert Nyland died on June 6, 1944. That was the day of the D-Day landings. And his brother Preston, he died exactly one day after, June 7. The two other brothers, the two other Nyland brothers, they survived the war. As for Tom Hanks' character, Captain Miller, neither the officer or his grave actually exist, but most of those buried here fought and died like him. The British, French, and Commonwealth soldiers fought just as bravely in Normandy. The British forces landed on Gold Beach with the task of building a temporary harbor called Port Winston. For the invasion of France, the Allies had to pick a part of the coast where the Germans were least likely to expect them, and therefore they chose Normandy. Now, the problem with Normandy is, although there were harbors in the area, these were very well defended by the Germans. And so what did they do? Well, they built a new harbor on the water. The Brits lost over a thousand men on Gold Beach, but moved quickly to build temporary portable harbors to offload two and a half million men, 500,000 vehicles, and four tons of supplies onto the beach. If you want to relive history, some concrete remnants of the harbor were left underwater. And there's a good war museum in town that's part of the tour offered by Trafalgar. But lovely Aromanche, like the rest of Normandy and Northwest France, has so much more to offer than just war history. Every part of France is wonderful for me, and everything has its own characteristics mm -hmm. because France is a country that's developed over the centuries. Different regions became French at different times in history, so each region has its own characteristics. And so it's like visiting, visiting different, different countries within one big country. Right, we're on our way to Paris. That's going to be an entirely different experience, right? Yes, uh, we'll, we'll notice we a different, different, different pace of life. But to me, Paris is a museum city. So everywhere you look, there are wonderful views. So it's still stunning. Right? It's beautiful, it's stunning, it's exciting. And that's where we're headed next. Another look at Paris and the hidden side of the city when executive class returns after the break. <laughs>